Hey, it's Clay. Welcome to another video. This time I am going to do an in-depth exploration and explanation of these guys. POTS, potentiometers. We're going to try to understand how they work and we're going to look at some different examples of how you can use them. Okay, so to first understand how a potentiometer works, let's go ahead and uh, kind of deconstruct it and look at what's going on on the inside. Um, I'm going to just use this guy as an example. I'm not actually going to deconstruct it but uh, we're gonna draw what is going on on the inside. So this is gonna be our example potentiometer. You can see we've got uh, the circle here and we've got the three terminals. Uh, I'm gonna pretend as if we are looking at the pot like this from the bottom side. The first thing to realize is that each of these three contact points represents something that's going on inside the pot. This first point is where I'm gonna start. There is a connection point right here and then there is a little circle that goes all the way around the pot and connects back over here on this outer side. Uh, so if your potentiometer were to, let's say, only have two connection points, it would basically just be a great big circle. And on this, this path, we have a set value of resistance. This is basically the exact same thing as what's going on here with this resistor but just in a different form. So the same, uh, you have some material here that is providing some resistance from one end to the other. And the amount of resistance is equal to the amount of the value of the pot. So this is a 250K pot, so we have 250K ohms of resistance. Where it gets interesting is with this middle terminal. This is called the wiper. And what the wiper does is it provides uh, basically a wiper. So if you think about on your car, you have a windshield wiper, it's kind of the same type of thing. So you have a wiper, and then based on where you turn the pot, when you turn the pot, you are turning the wiper. And it can travel all the way over to this point. And so what this does, is it creates um, a variable in the mix. Um, and so when you turn the pot, what you're essentially doing is turning the wiper and uh, making an adjustment here. And uh, so let's go ahead and get into uh, some of the different ways you can use this. Now that we understand kind of the basic internal composition, let's go ahead and take a look at different ways that we can use this uh, to create some interesting things in our circuits. The first I want to go over is the variable resistor. So the variable resistor makes a lot of sense. As I mentioned, we have some material here that is creating an amount of resistance similar to a resistor, but it is variable, which makes it very useful. So let's go ahead and draw how you would wire a pot to be a variable resistor. If you have this terminal number one, which again correlates to what I'm going to call the beginning of the circuit. Now, I'm going to use this left post as the kind of the starting point, but it really is rather arbitrary. There's no reason you couldn't start on the other side. Um, and actually, there may be instances where you want to do that. Uh, the, the, the difference being that, let's, so let's say if you took um, a guitar volume pot and you wired it up what would technically be backwards, it would still function. It would just be the opposite, where uh, where when the volume pot is what we currently think of as full on, it would actually be at zero and then vice versa. But there really is no reason why you could do it the other way around. Uh, but just kind of for consistency's sake, I'm going to start here with our input. Okay, so we have our, we're going to wire this pot as a variable resistor. We've determined this is going to be the input. So we have, basically that means we have a circuit where we want to apply some resistance, but we want to be able to vary it. We want to be able to... Um, you know, we don't want just a fixed value, we want to be able to vary it. If we wire this as our input, it comes into the circuit here, and then we wire this as our output. And that's about as simple as it gets. Uh, we just have the input, the output, and again, let's refer to our diagram. What we are doing is we are sending the signal in here to our input, and then let's say we have the wiper maybe right here, like at about let's just say it's about halfway. Um, so what that means is that the pot is going, or that the signal is going to travel through half of the available resistance, so like we have a 250k pot here, that means that at this point it would be receiving 125k ohms of resistance, and then it would be sending 
what's going on in between here out the wiper. So that creates a variable resistor. In some other circuits, you will also um, see these two connection points be jumpered, and that's totally fine. It does not actually change anything electrically. Um, so if that's how you want to wire it, that's totally acceptable. I've seen both, and uh, you know, if somebody wants to correct me, if I'm wrong on this point, I'd be happy to be corrected. But to my knowledge and understanding, um, both are acceptable and will create the same type of effect. Uh, and if you think about it, it makes some amount of sense, uh, to my understanding at least. You know, well, we have this, this portion over here of the circuit, but uh, you know, again, it's coming in here, it's traveling along this amount of resistance, and it's coming out. The next type of, of uh, way that, I'm gonna, that we use a pot most commonly is, is known as the, the volume control, or what is also going to be called uh, the voltage divider. Let's draw our pot. The uh, voltage divider is called such, um, and if you think about a volume control, it makes some amount of sense. When you have an input coming in, if you want to reduce the volume or the gain or the level of that signal, uh, it has to go somewhere, something has to happen to it, and so uh, that's how we're going to wire it. Um, so our input, in the very same way, our output is going to come out here. And then um, our third terminal, however, is going to be wired differently. It is actually going to go to ground. This is how you would wire up to be a voltage divider or a volume control. Now let's analyze what's happening here. Again, we have the signal coming into the input. It's traveling along this amount of resistance. Now, um, instead of just simply coming to our output here, it actually has two paths. Uh, based on the amount of resistance that has been applied, some of that signal can be sent out here, uh, I'm sorry, here from the output, but then the remainder of the signal can also travel the rest of this way to ground. When the, when the volume control is wide open, that means that it's traveling through the entire amount and only just a tiny little portion of, this, of the remainder is, is set to go to ground. However, when you have the wiper turned all the way to the left, then only a very brief amount is going to actually travel through this wiper, and a tremendous amount of the signal is going to be going to ground. Those are kind of our two main ways that we can use a pot. Now, I also want to bring up a third way. I'm going to refer to this as the blend control, and I'll show you why here in a second. All right, so the third and final use that I'm going to talk about in this video is a blend control. This is actually pretty useful and kind of a fun little thing to do. You actually want to send your input right here into the wiper. I'm just going to label this as I because I apologize I'm running out of space. This is going to be kind of your single source. So what you're doing is you're sending the signal onto the wiper. And then what you do is you connect, I'm going to call this output 1 right here, and then output 2, I'm just going to say O2 right here. What happens is you send the signal onto the wiper. Depending on the position of the wiper will determine to which side, either this side or this side, you're going to blend the signal. So when the wiper is all the way over here, you are creating a close contact right here and it's just going to go strictly to this output. Put the wiper all the way to this side, it's going to go right over here. And when you're right up the middle, it's going to be 50-50. This makes a couple of assumptions about the nature of your circuit. One would be that the impedances, if you have a relatively low impedance signal, which is coming from a high driving source, maybe like an op amp or some tubes or something, uh, this could probably work pretty well. That If you get a value pot, that's not going to cause much loading or anything like that, and it's basically just going to function like a volume control, and the resistive element really isn't coming into play very much. You know, So based on those assumptions, you can use this as a nice blend control. And uh, so I've actually used this. You could actually flip it around as well if you had... Um, two inputs, one input on the outside, one input on the inside, and then the output going out the middle, that would be the inverse and it would functionally create the same type of thing. But it's a, a pretty neat little circuit. So for example, um, you could have, let's say, I, I use this on my fuzz face, right? So let's say you have the, this is the, the input of the fuzz face, so this will be the jack, and then this is going to go to ground. 
So this is going to be the input of our control. Now one of the most important components in a fuzz face is the input capacitor. The value of the input capacitor is very powerful in shaping how much low end response is, is going through the circuit. So um, what you could do is you could split this into this blend pot, right? And then you could have an output going here and an output going here. Uh, maybe this one goes to a point 0.01, whereas this one goes to a point, maybe like a 2.2. .2. You know, so some pretty different value capacitors. And then they both join together to go onto the rest of the circuit. So again, you're using the pot to blend between these two signals.